Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with the NVIDIA Shield TV once more because a lot of you were curious about uh, its ability to mount network drives and how that might work in other applications, specifically uh, game emulators and other things that often access files on uh, external storage like USB drives or memory cards and that kind of thing. So we're going to be exploring that a little bit in this video. Now this Shield on the desk here was provided by NVIDIA. This is an NVIDIA Shield Pro, uh, but I have bought additional Shield devices for my other TV in the house, but nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and nobody is reviewing this content before it is posted. So I want to do a recap first of how this network drive mounting thing works. So you go into your settings screen here, and you go over to your storage option, and when you're in there, you'll see now, if you did your update on your Shield device, the option for network storage. Now, right now, I have uh, one mounted already from my Synology disk station here. So what's nice about this is that once you get your password and username put in, every time you boot the Shield up and it's on your network, it's going to reconnect to that uh, device automatically. So if you do set paths to uh, certain storage locations in an app, it will find it again when you reboot the Shield. So that was a nice thing to see that they thought of that. And what I'm just going to do here is to show you how it works when you want to connect to something. So I have my WD MyCloud here in the house. I'm going to connect as a guest, uh, so that way we don't have to go through the username and password rigmarole. But if you uh, wanted to connect to a username and password protected directory, you would just go ahead and put that in there. Uh, this does take a little bit of time to get that connection established. Once I found it was connected, uh, it then works. But it does take a little bit, uh, so don't get nervous if this takes a little bit longer than you think it might otherwise take. So we're just going to let this uh, do what it does, and when it's done, we'll come back. All right, so it takes about a minute or two for everything to get connected, but once it does, you can then uh, just verify that it worked by going into your network storage option here. So you can see now we have two drives mounted and I've got the WD MyCloud now sitting next to my disk station from Synology. And uh, we'll take a look here and see everything that's on the WD that's accessible to our Android TV here. And here's all the different folders that our apps will be able to connect to. Now, when I uh, did the Plex video, I just tested very briefly uh, the Mega Drive emulator called MD.EMU. It's the Sega Genesis to us here in the United States. There is one right back there, as a matter of fact. Uh, and if we go into that emulator real quick, you can see uh, that the uh, Synology disk station is accessible to us and I'm going to just show you up at the top here uh, this is where you can see the directory so we've got it in storage disk station which is the Synology drive and then in my emulators folder uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and a bunch of other games are in here so I'm just going to load up Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and what's going to happen is is that ROM is going to get pushed over the network to uh, the device here and it loads up very quickly the nice thing about uh, the way these emulators work is that um, they often just load the entire ROM into memory so there's not a a lot of timing issues that you're going to have to deal with here. Uh, but I did notice that when I tried to do other things with the Sega Genesis emulator, I ran into some trouble. So let me get out of uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog game here real quick, and we'll try to load up um, one of the uh, Sega CD games I have accessible to me. So I'm going to go here to load game. I'm going to back out a directory here and go over to uh, the Sega CD directory that I have set up in there. And if we go in there, uh, I think what I'll do is pop open NHL 94, and we'll just uh, select that. I think it's going to see if it wants me to reload an old game. I'm just going to say uh, restart. Uh, and it does do what it needs to do as far as loading up the Sega CD BIOS and everything. But when I actually go to start the game, um, once it gets past this part here, it doesn't seem to work. So I think there's some timings perhaps that uh, the Mega Drive emulator requires for it to work properly. And uh, it's not getting that over the network for whatever reason. This is certainly a different way of accessing storage on Android. It's probably not something that the author, uh, Robert Broglia, of this uh, emulator predicted. So I found that not every game that works when it's on local storage works when it's on the network drive, unfortunately. So you might want to stick to your external storage or the internal storage for uh, things like the CD ISOs and everything else. I did find like Silphied, which was one of my favorite Sega CD games, does load up fine. But uh, NHL 94 here just kind of sits on a black screen and that is it. But one thing that does seem to work pretty well is the Dreamcast emulator called Raycast. And that is now uh, at the moment running this uh, game of Virtua Tennis from an ISO that's located uh, on the network drive we connected earlier on the Synology device. So uh, it seems to be uh, working fine for this emulator and some just seem to have issues. So I think it's really going to depend on the individual emulator because I can pop out of here, for example, uh, go back over to maybe Propeller, Propeller Arena, which was a unreleased
Streamcast game, which is actually kind of fun. Uh, and that one loads up just fine over the network as well. So again, I think this is really going to just be dependent on what your particular application is expecting. Uh, some things are going to work, others probably won't, um, but you may just need to try it. Uh, the one thing that does though work very well is Plex, which is what we demonstrated in the last video. And that's what this feature was really designed for, was to be able to uh, connect over the network to uh, network attached storage devices and other stuff uh, to get those media files accessible to the Plex server that runs on this. And that of course works great. Uh, but if you are having trouble with your particular application, I would write to the author of that and see if they might be able to make some adjustments to make it work. This is Lon Seibin, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you wanna help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.